public housing right. has been neglected, left to get worse, and we're not going to stand for it anymore. The president called for $40 billion. We are calling for at least $80 billion, double what the president has called for. My name is Melanie Orsello, and I'm a member of Fight for NYCHA, and NYCHA is not for sale. We spoke at Senator Schumer's press conference where he promised $80 billion for public housing in the infrastructure bill. After the Republican compromise, there was no money for public housing in the infrastructure bill. We need this money to stop the privatization of public housing. We need to save Section 9. We have to keep Section 9. Right now, the chairman of the Housing Authority is systematically behind all our backs, going into developments, lying to residents about why we need to get that blueprint passed and why we need to uh, uh, accept the ride by private developers. The ones that become lucrative in the whole mush is, is the private developers. Because there's been no money for public housing, politicians are using Section 8 conversions under Rad Pact and the proposed blueprint. This ends public housing, even though when Section 8 vouchers were created, they were never meant to end Section 9. Yet, that's exactly what's happening. It's happened at my NYCHA public housing apartment building in Manhattan, and it's happening more and more elsewhere. Um, oversight and audit measures are going to be um, a little tough, tough, but it's you know, certainly a priority of ours. Now, Senator Schumer is promising us the money for public housing in the budget reconciliation, but that comes with strings attached. Like, we cannot demand forensic audits of public housing authorities, and we cannot repeal the Fair Cloth Amendment that caps the construction of new public housing. We are very scared that politicians will use these limitations to either accelerate Section 8 conversions or do something way worse. Please listen to how we were told that Senate rules about the filibuster and the parliamentarian can derail what we need to save public housing. So if there's any excuses made for not uh, protecting Section 9, uh, we know that it, it could have been done, that an excuse could have been made. I mean, the, the, the mayor, the next mayor of New York City is going to support the blueprint. So if, if Leader Schumer does not craft a workaround to classify saving Section 9 as a budget issue, can we assume that that was intentional? Um, it, can you assume, uh, I mean, it's, I, if, if that were ever to happen, uh, I mean, it, it, I, I can't imagine, I can't, it wouldn't be intentional, but I, you know, just from our, from our reports about conversations with the parliamentarian, I don't, you know, I can't, I don't foresee that being an issue. Um, and, you know, so if for whatever reason, um, you know, a big investment in section nine public housing did not happen, uh, there were, you know, either the entire reconciliation bill was scuttled or, um, or some other, you know, drastic occurrence that I, that I am having trouble even picturing. Well, we just established that the parliamentarian is a scapegoat, right? So if we fall back on that excuse, So I want to just correct some of those things that you said. Um, I think you're miscategorizing the relationship with the parliamentarian, also who the parliamentarian is, right? Like, the parliamentarian is not a scapegoat, right? This, that person is put in that place because they do have these rules, right? And, like, obviously there has been um, complicated histories with past parliamentarians. Um, but I don't... We wouldn't be using them as a scapegoat for that, right? Like, that that has a lot of negative implications or that we're trying to make excuses for something, and that would never be the case, right? Um, there are obviously more complicated factors into all of this, and like Ryan said, we think things will be okay, hopefully. Um but it's, it's never going to be us unintentionally unintention removing it. That, that would be absurd and a mischaracterization of his entire operation and him as a person. Um, so that, that's, that's definitely, that would never be the case. We would never take something out intentionally if that could be put in. Like right? the $15 that, that, minimum wage that the Senate parliamentarian right, was right, used that's as because excuse? it wasn't reconcilable because of how it affects states. Right. So, for instance, the Social Security Administration cannot be reformed through reconciliation because that then goes to states. Right. That's why the $15 minimum wage, because it was not reconcilable. 
because of what it impacts on the rest of the state's rights. That's what happened. But there. they could have fired the parliamentarian and rehired a new one in that case that would have aligned with that their views. That probably would right? have made the same exact conclusion. Did you hear how we were told Schumer would never take out public housing funding? But they did from the infrastructure bill. Now they are saying that they betrayed the promise on the infrastructure bill, but trust us on the budget reconciliation. How many times can we be lied to with a straight face? I think we should know right now if Senator, if Leader Schumer is willing to force a vote on the protection of Section 9 housing after the potential failure of this reconciliation bill. If we, if we, if we were just going to bring up uh, either Nadia Velasquez's or Warren's bill on the floor for a vote, um, I mean, I think, yeah, that, I, I mean, if the reconciliation bill fails, I mean, I. I think our options would be severely limited. Because of the risks involved to public housing residents, we increasingly feel that H.R. 235, the bill to fully fund public housing, should be passed as a standalone bill after it has been increased to guarantee $40 billion to save Section 9 housing and amended to include forensic audit requirements, a repeal of the Fair Cloth Amendment, and education and jobs and programs for public housing residents. This would stop the privatization of public housing. Yes. Yes. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Well, will this prevent RAD from existing in New York City? Well, the, the reason uh, that NYCHA has come up with RAD is because of the lack of resources and investment from the federal government. If we get this money, there's no reason for that. The, the, the NYCHA or any agency or city government should not be in the business of selling public assets. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Mel. I could be, uh, we're honored to be here. This is the place to be because what we're talking about here is fundamentally changing NYCHA so that people either can no longer live there, largely will be privatized, and people, as Mel said, won't be able to ensure that their kids can have the same housing stability that they've had. We don't trust Greg Russ, the head of NYCHA, his plan. We don't trust the leadership of the city. And it's no surprise why, when during the height of the pandemic, you had leaders from NYCHA going building to building, either trying to get folks to sign on to RAD under duress, or the number of buildings that have had outages of gas for months at a time in my neighborhood, Fulton, for example. We can't trust the leadership. We can't trust the mayor. What we need is for our leadership at the congressional level, Chuck Schumer, our senator majority leader, and Nadia Velasquez, who's really led on fully funding NYCHA legislation in the House, we need to support their plan. We need to ignore and tell our local leaders to support the federal aid program because the only way to ensure NYCHA residents a better quality of life and a future for NYCHA and their kids and grandkids is to get the full $40 billion that New York City's public housing is owed. It's what's owed, it's what's right, and both the federal and the state and all local government has basically lost the trust of people. And now we need to make it right by passing that legislation and getting the $40 billion to make it right for NYCHA. I just want to say that having stood with Senator Schumer and Nydia um, a few months ago, um, I, I do want to note that NYCHA residents, we are holding him as the guardian of our lives, basically, and we're holding him to his word that when we stood there with him and held up the signs to fully fund NYCHA, we believed in him. And, um, you know, come re-election, you know, it's going to be dicey, uh, and I have to have something, you know, there has to be something concrete. I think this is Senator Schumer's time to really actually put in to motion instead of the words, you know, uh, reconciliation or let's do that. Let, he has the chance to, to make history and to change this, to actually do something to end some of the racial disinvestment. No, it would no by, by any means, it would never correct it in, in entirety. But, you know, I think it's just important to remember that, you know, we are holding Senator Schumer to his word.